Hey, we got this one back on the bench. This is from a recent video where I replaced the LCD and uh, the battery inside and a few other bits and pieces here and there. Uh, now it's time to add the option board. There is a board that's missing from this. It's an optional board that uh, provides a, uh, a phase lock loop so that when you're running a, a continuous output, it improves the, um, the accuracy and uh, precision of that output. It's a, uh, a phase lock loop board with a, uh, a high precision crystal. It doesn't have an oven, uh, oven control crystal oscillator, but it's just a, uh, a sounding crystal, but it does phase locked loop stuff and makes it um, accurate to like four and a half digits or something. Um, I think it was in the manual it was saying. So I want to um, add that to this because I want to make it um, more better. And uh, it's something that I don't have, so I want it because I don't have it. So <laughs> I thought I would make one. So as usual, PCBWay have come through with the goods. I've uh, designed a circuit board from the uh, original. I managed to find uh, a bunch of information I needed because um, the manual has the uh, board layout. It has schematics, but there's some uh, part numbers that are missing. And this is from the era where Tektronix started not putting full parts lists and full schematics and whatnot in their manuals. They started pulling back on that for whatever reason. So... Um, I found someone who was um, who, online who had the original option board fitted to their unit and uh, they were able to look at their board and give me some part numbers that I needed and I have got the finished boards here. Fantastic. Got them in blue rather than the normal green because the boards in the, uh, the unit are blue so it's going to match. And it looks like I've got a few goodies as well. So I've got another pen. Always love getting pens because I use them a lot. A couple of stickers. And... It looks like a little, uh, what's that? It's the uh, post-it note book. So it's a book of uh, sticky notes. Fantastic. Thanks for that. That is awesome. So let's open this one up and see what we got. This is actually a slight prototype because I found some discrepancies in the, uh, the actual PCB. Um, the person who got me all those um, the part numbers they sent me pictures of the PCBs. And um, I was looking through it on the images and things didn't quite match up with the schematics. So I'm not sure uh, if the schematics are wrong or if the PCB is wrong or um, the PCB that the uh, this guy had was a version 1. I don't know if the schematics were from a later revision um, or if it's just a mistake that just went unnoticed. I... I need to find another original PCB like a that's a higher version than version 1 to, to see. So what I've done is uh, I've added a few little uh, solder jumper pads. Because these uh, chips, there's some pins that should be either tied to ground or to a negative voltage. And uh, that basically, by tying it to a negative voltage, you improve the rise time of the chip because it's pulling harder when it's coming up and coming back down again. If you've got a wider voltage difference, you know, positive 5 to 0 or positive 5 to negative 5, it's going to pull down harder and quicker. So in the schematics, one of the chips were tied to the uh, negative rail, one was tied to ground. On the actual circuit board, uh, the Tektronix circuit board, the... Um, both those chips had those pins left floating. So in the data sheet, it, it says it should be tied to ground or to a negative voltage. Um, it doesn't say you can leave it floating, so I'm not sure. I don't know if someone messed up and they just went, like, does it work? Yeah, it works. Send it. Like, just, we're not going to spin the boards again. Like, just, just send it out as it is. It works enough. Or if they're relying on, like, some undocumented pull-down feature or pull-up or whatever in the uh, in the chip that, allowed it to work I don't know so what I've done is uh, put those solder pads so I can either leave it floating I can pull it down to ground or I can pull it right down to negative 5 volts I can choose that with those solder pads so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it with a different configuration because I can just solder and desolder the, the pads and uh, see what happens and then by the time you guys are watching this video and you download the Gerbers you'll get the best version of that so um, you won't have to worry about those solder, solder blobs. But there is the PCB. Fantastic. I didn't realise the, uh, the blue was so uh, opaque in the green if you um, have writing in the um, yeah, like artwork in the solder 
uh, in the solder in the copper layer. Um, it shows through a bit more than what it does there on the blue, but that's not too bad. Maybe in the next revision I'll have that as the uh, the solder, uh, the uh, the silk screen, so it's white. But you can kind of read it. I was copying the um, the Tektronix design where they uh, put their part numbers and stuff in the um, in the copper layer. But yeah, and there's a the back looking really good. I sat there tweaking this over and over. I kept coming back like the next day and then have a look and then, uh, oh yeah, move that and move that. And then the next day I'll come back and, oh yeah, I'll just tweak that and that. So this is pretty much laid out as perfectly as I can get it. But yeah, so uh, basically all we got to do is drop the parts in and then uh, plug it in and see if it works. So there's one adjustment and that's the uh, synthesizer reference frequency. So you, you tie your uh, frequency counter to test point 900 and ground between those two and then you tweak that until you get exactly four megahertz all right we have parts now i don't have all the parts on me right now i'm still waiting for some to arrive i was able to buy all the parts brand new except for three chips that which are obsolete there's a uh, pll generator chip or something and then there's two other chips which I needed the HCT version, but you can only get the HC version. And the uh, HC version is not TTL compatible. The HCT version is. Uh, I've got some of those coming from a uh, from Germany. Um, a member on the EV blog forum managed to get one, get like ten of them uh, locally for a good price, and he's sending them to me. But if I was to buy them directly from the shop, the post was going to be ridiculous, like thirty euros or, so, or something. So um, yeah. By the time I'm done soldering this board, uh, YouTube time, they will be here. Um, they're not here yet. So I've got a bunch of chips and a bunch of capacitors and what's that? Transistors. Yeah. So I might just get into it and uh, give this thing, this thing a go. Here we are, all done. Apologies for not showing the whole construction process, but it would have taken quite a while even with the time lapse, so it would have got a bit boring. But it's just solder the parts in the right spots, make sure they're not backwards, and uh, yeah, try and do it somewhat neat. So here we are, all done. This one here, the MC145145P, that's the one that's going to be difficult to get. This one here is a Motorola. I got mine from uh, eBay, and it seems to be a genuine part. It's probably a pull like a, from an old board. I got two of them just in case. And uh, yeah, they sent it in some foam. So great for an ESD, not. But they do work. Uh, I checked them under the microscope uh, to make sure if there was any um, evidence of black topping or laser etching. And there isn't. The ink looks original and it looks old, which um, like the old style, like uh, screen printing. And the texture is consistent all the way around, including right underneath in the pin, inside the pins. Uh, so yeah, there's no evidence that they've been uh, faked from a different chip. They've probably just been pulled out of a, a board and then just uh, dipped in solder to retin the leads. But that's part of the course when you're working with obsolete electronics. They do seem to work fine. The other part would be the uh, 74HET4518, the three here. They are also obsolete, but you can get those new old stock from around the place. Now it's time for a bit of a side quest. Uh, I've noticed that some of the LEDs on the front panel don't work. I didn't notice that before, but I've just realized that they're not working. The top row here. So you can see this one's lit up. I can turn those ones you know, as I come up. If I press the top one, nothing. Same with these. These are all working. This one, nothing. Nothing. They're working. And same here. Square wave, 
triangle wave, nothing. This whole top row isn't working. So let's uh, have a look at the schematics and see what we can figure out if we can uh, find where this is being controlled from, the, this whole row. All right, so here we've got the uh, front panel keyboard display uh, schematic. Down the bottom there you can see the uh, keyboard matrix and then the uh, LED matrix which we're interested in in the top right hand corner. So if we, uh, if we go ahead and zoom in there, uh, you can see the uh, LEDs which aren't working. I've highlighted those in red. And uh, then there's a, uh, they're all not working, so there's a common thing, there's a common element here. So if we take a, a bit of a look, and you can see there's the uh, horizontal lines. Now, if they're, one of them wasn't working, or if a, a horizontal line of buttons wasn't working um, in the schematic, then uh, we'll be looking at those. But it's the, uh, that first column that all isn't working. So the common denominator, the common factor there, is that... Uh, this line here that I've just highlighted, the uh, LSN0, which goes to uh, P2-10, you can see at the top. So that P2-10 is the uh, backplane connector. If we head over to the uh, backplane schematic, you can see here, and I'll highlight the, uh, the display uh, PCB connector in red. Now if we zoom in, we can see on pin 10 there, LSN0 goes to pin 29C on the CPU board. So we have got to jump over the CPU board, and we will see this. So this is a keyboard controller section of the uh, the CPU board. The CPU board has like got four or five pages of um, of schematics, but this is what we're interested in. So you can see on the right hand side there, P three hundred. That's our backplane connector into that um, into that backplane board that we just looked at. So LSN zero, there it is, right there. So that's coming across through a transistor and then to U302, which is a 74HCT138. So one of those two things is bad, the transistor or that um, that's 74HCT138. Now the easiest thing to test is obviously the uh, transistor, so we'll test that first, and then if that's working, we can look at the um, that, that 7400 series chip. So if we go over to the uh, circuit board assembly diagram, this will show us where things are and those transistors down the bottom right hand corner just there so the one we want is that one right there so we'll pull that transistor out and uh, see if it tests okay or not so that transistor yeah is down here this one right here on the left hand side all right got it hooked up pulled out of there let's see what happens it's a diode that's no good that's gone bad so that is a 2N3906. I think I might have some of them, actually. I'll go get some, put a new one in. Okay, so the new transistor is in. All right, let's see if it works. Let it boot. Yep, that one's working. The arbitrary button is working. Program, hit the enter button. Yep, that's working. Uh, a mode conflict, hang on. There we go, internal triggering is working, and sweep, linear, yep, the sweep LED is working. So that row is now good. Fantastic. All right, on with the show. All right, I've got the option board installed, and we're ready to test. So to install the option board into the unit, it's really easy. Um, take the back panel off, slide it in, click it into place, put the back panel on, and you're done. Uh, so that's been done. We've got the module sitting in the TM5003 mainframe and uh, we're ready to turn on and see what happens. So when I do turn it on, it'll say uh, AFG5101 blah 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 on the top line. Uh, the bottom line at the left, it'll give us some firmware information. And then on the right at the bottom, it should say OPT02 to let us know that the option 2 is being detected. So let's turn it on and see what it says. Yes, option 02 has been detected. We're one step forward, fantastic. Doesn't guarantee it's actually working, just that it's been detected. So next step is to hook it up and see what happens. So what I've done is uh, I have, uh, before I put that option board in, I turned this thing on, let it warm up, gave it an adjustment, and uh, hooked up to my uh, HP frequency counter. That frequency counter is GPS referenced. So with this thing adjusted to as close as I can get it, the uh, GPS reference frequency counter, our ring's going to be best case scenario, as, as good as I can do in my lab here. So now that we've got the option 2 board installed, that uh, has also been 
adjusted that four megahertz crystal has been adjusted properly and um, we can now see how that compares so if I set this to 10 megahertz enter so we've got 10 megahertz there and turn it on and have that connect to my counter I'll take a photo of the uh, the counter so I've taken a photo before option 02 I'll take a photo after option 02 and we'll see how they compare so here we have the output without option 02 uh, this is as close as I could possibly get it tongue in the right position wearing the correct colored socks and using a GPS frequency reference to dial it right in 9.9978501 so that's really close uh, it's within spec the uh, specification without option 02 is that for the accuracy is 0.5 percent of the reading from 5 megahertz to 12 megahertz in continuous mode continuous mode means it's um sine wave square wave triangle wave a continuous waveform that's repeating over and over and over not a one-off shot or a pulse or an arbitrary output or whatever so uh 0.5 percent of 10 megahertz is 9.95 and we got 9.997 so we're like an order of magnitude better than the spec so that's fantastic but it's not good enough for option 02 option 02 uh, states an accuracy of 50 ppm uh, so that on the low side is 9.9995 we're 997 9.997 so we're better than the spec without option 02 but not as good as the spec with option 02 which stands to reason so if we go over to the uh, reading with option 02 installed look at that 10.0000390 like that's nice that's much much better now the 50 ppm reading the 50 ppm limit uh, on the high side is 10.0005 and we are 10.0000035 so we're once again an order of magnitude better so that's again fantastic um, that option 02 is obviously working it's giving us much better output and I am a happy camper and that is done that option 02 board is giving us much high accuracy on the output which is fantastic it's working perfectly the uh, top row of buttons there we fix the LEDs in there working great it's been adjusted calibrated and upgraded two enthusiastic thumbs up I'm really happy with the way this turned out all finished also special thanks to PCB way of course for hooking me up with those PCBs always uh, making good quality products always sort you out check out the link below to their website you'll find a whole heap of stuff they do there not just PCBs anymore they'll do all the different types of PCBs including aluminium and uh, flex PCBs and all Rogers material and all that sort of stuff but they also do machining CNC machining uh, 3d printing they do injection molding uh, PCB assembly and manufacture and all sorts of stuff whole service is fantastic so check them out and uh, yeah if you need the uh, design files for this thing you'll find those linked down below as well so uh, that's it for this video have a good one and we'll see you in the next video